Okay. Uh, just to reassure everyone, uh, we're recording this and the next session uh, as a resource for artists that can't make it today or tomorrow. Um, we, when we actually put the recording out there, the only people that will feature on it will be me and the CTM partners. So when you ask a question, when we actually cut the video down at the end, we'll edit you out and we'll just write your question uh, on a blank screen. So you're anonymous, anything you're saying here today is not gonna be put on the internet, um, but we are gonna do that bit of editing so that artists can hear or read your questions and hear our answers if they can't make it today, next week. If anyone has any concerns about that or how that's gonna work, um, please just message me on here or after the session and we can, we can talk about that a bit more. Also, just to say these sessions don't form any sort of part of the assessment of the EOIs for CTM. Um, they're not compulsory for people to attend. We're not making any notes about who asks what. It's just purely creating a space for people to ask us some questions uh, and to make sure that artists understand the project and have a chance to decide if it feels like it's something they want to apply for. And it's also just really useful for us um, to hear about what questions are coming up and probably to make us think about the project as we're, as we're going along through this process. Um, great, so if everyone's happy, I'm going to move on to, yeah, why we're doing this in the first place. <laughs> um, so CTN has launched an open call out because we want to form a partnership with an artist or company for a year to develop and mentor a piece of live performance across our eight locations. The CTN is a collective of eight independent, brilliant grassroots organizations. Um, two of us have our own buildings, six of us don't. All of us work across our communities in all sorts of ways, from running social change projects with teenagers, to leading drama groups with under fives, to running dance classes for elders. Um, and alongside all of that work in the community, we also all develop and program artists and invite audiences to experience live work together in our places. Um, and those places are all over England. Uh, so we're based in Gloucester, in Hull, in Medway, in Peterborough, in Torbay, Thanet, Wandsworth, and Wigan. Um, and we're all about connecting amazing artists with people in our communities. And those communities are urban locations in England. So they're towns and cities. And they have all been, yeah, routinely overlooked and underserved <laughs> by public funding. All of the CTN areas are facing high levels of multiple deprivation and all the CTN areas are home to amazing artists and creative individuals. Our approach as a network has always been twofold. We wanna support the development of the CTN partner organizations and by extension, create the environment for arts and culture to flourish in these places. Um, and the CTN partners do that by commissioning and supporting local artists, they provide creative opportunities for people of all ages, as I've mentioned earlier. But as a network, we also work with artists nationally to tour work into our places. And we believe that's really important in inspiring people, in starting conversations, in sharing perspectives that might not come to the fore in those places otherwise. Um, I'm just gonna share my screen really quickly just to show you a few tiny examples of the work that we have toured over the years. Um, uh, it always feels like it takes an agonizing amount of time. Cool, so this is uh, a show by a company called Non Zero One. This show is called Ground Control. This is us setting up in Hull Central Library. It's an amazing show for children where adults are not allowed. Uh, and we used Hull Central Library a lot actually over the course of CTN, transforming it into um, yeah, what feels a bit like a theatre space, as you can see. Uh, this is on the rooftop of a car park, a Gloucester Guildhall car park. Uh, and this work is a session, brilliant dance piece by Stillhouse, Steppers, Empire Sounds. 
and a huge amount of work has been presented on the rooftop in Gloucester uh, over the years. Uh, Jess Tom, Tourette's hero, performed backstage in Biscuit Lounge with us uh, in 2016, presented that in all sorts of uh, spaces. This photo was at uh, Teesside University, um, but yeah, we presented that in community spaces and theatre spaces and all sorts. Uh, this was super fun because this is Chris Brett Bailey show This Is How We Die, which is like really pretty cutting edge contemporary work that we put on in uh, lots of cool spaces. But this photo, I think, is from the Adelphi Club in Hull, which is a really famous nightclub. Uh, and we set up, uh, yeah, created a former space within that club. And Chris did his show there. And yeah, finally, a cattle market, which is probably one of the more unusual spaces that we've worked in. Uh, this is in Darlington, who actually don't partner with us on the project anymore. But yeah, a space that usually hosts sheep, in this case, was hosting a show. Um, cool. So that gives you a bit of a sense. But yeah, essentially, we've put on work in a lot of places. Uh, and we're really interested and excited by that. Um, we, so in the first six years of CTN, sorry, we used uh, a festival model as the basis of our work together. So we toured multiple artists around the country at the same time into all these different sorts of spaces. Um, we're changing that a little bit from 2020 onwards and we're moving away from a festival model and towards a year round working approach. So all of the partners continue to do all of their work locally. Um, but we also come together now once a year to pr produce one national touring project within Artist or Company, and that project spans a whole year. So this call out that we're talking about today is the first of, of this way of working. And we've developed this structure really over our eight years of working together so far, but also we've done some specific paid consultations with some experienced touring artists, and with our communities over the past six months. So we've been trying to take into account, yeah, the way the world has changed and how we can work to best serve artists and communities now. I guess it's important to say that this opportunity won't be for everyone. Um, part of the reason for running these sessions is to help you guys as artists decide whether you think this way of working is right for you in terms of your practice, in terms of how you like to work, your experience, your ability to commit to a project like this for a year. Um, and I'm hoping that today might be helpful in you guys understanding and making that decision. Um, before I get into a bit of detail about how we want to work with the artists or companies that are applying and to give a bit of an overview of the application process, um, I was just gonna ask Jade, if that's okay, just to, to share with you, yeah, her take on the impact of DCN in Torbay and, and why we think this way of working is important and has been really transformative. All right, Jade, my hand to you. Hello, my name's Jade Campbell. My pronouns are she, her. I'm a 39 year old white woman. I'm five foot seven. I've got hair kind of up to my jaw and it's dark brown. Um, and I've got a very red, hot, sweaty face because just, I've just been running, so that's why. And uh, my background is a blue wall. <laughs> um, yeah, so Doorstep Arts is, uh, we're, we, we focus on children and young people. Um, we are one of the first, we are the first and the only national portfolio organisation in Torbay. And I think um, that is down to being a CTN partner only <laughs> it's the only reason why we got it <laughs> that's the reality and uh, the CTN has been a massive inspiration point for the children and young people that we work with and their families so for us um, um, we were getting a lot of companies before the CTN kind of parachuting work into Torbay and then leaving again and it was a bit of a tick box exercise and it wasn't really no one was going to see it we're known as a cultural cold spot people don't go and see new original work this is what the Arts Council was saying at the time um, people will go and see Amjam Theatre which is excellent and they'll go and see kind of tribute bands and um, maybe the odd musical that comes in but um new and original theatre was risky. And so we, we kind of thought that we would work with children and young people year round 
um, providing high quality provision so that when theatre toured, they could do maybe a curtain raiser for a company or um, have a workshop with, with, with an artist. And that has been an incredible, has made an incredible impact on um, the children and young people and their families in the Bay. And I'll just give a couple of examples to help you understand it because it's, it is exciting. I've written some notes down here. So for example, um, one artist, Conrad Murray, when he came down, he, he inspired a whole bunch of young people in beatboxing and um, his work, I don't know if you've seen it, but Denmark's, it, he, the great thing about Conrad is he would stay behind and chat to the young people in the audience afterwards. So like, they'd be, they'd be so inspired about how did they make it? How, how did he do what he did? And then, um, oh, that they would might relate to everything that he said, or they might like see themselves in that, or they might not. And also that kind of dialogue that is around that is really important about understanding the same, but also different and other. Um, so for us, that was really important. But the nice story of Conrad is only a couple of weeks ago, he came back to Torbay, but not to be with us, but to come and work with a radio, a youth radio station down the road from us who met him when he came down all those years ago. So, you know, it really is impactful and people remember, people remember people coming down. And because we're a trusted organization, you know, people will go, oh, they were with Doorstep. Oh, that's great. You know, because it's very local, local in Torbay. Um, another example is, for example, Sean Mahoney toured Until You Hear That Bell. And um, uh, there was a young man that I was working with at that time. And he was writing so much poetry all the time. And I remember Sean, he was like, oh, I could do that. That's that I could make something like that. And he was so inspired. And then they continued the dialogue for the next year or so, kind of sharing poetry <laughs> over email, which was just really beautiful. Um, and like, uh, like for example, I think Jim Party toured to one of the community centers once and uh, one of the parents brought a, a big busload of young people over and he was gonna go. And I was like, no, 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 you need to come and stay and watch. And we fed them all. And then he watched it and he said, I've never seen anything like that. And he still asked me, what's coming next? What are you bringing down? You know, what's happening with that, with that CTN stuff? Like it really does inspire people in our local community. And like I say, I don't think we'd exist in the way that we do if it wasn't for the CTN and for the work that comes. Um, have I missed anything, Rosie? Would you like me to say anything else? Is no, that that, that's great. Okay. Just sitting here just nodding and smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jade. Um, EJ, is that, that's a little finger in the air. Yeah, I can't resist chipping in. Um, Jade, that's brilliant to hear all that. Um, I think as well to say that we have had elongated uh, relationships with many of the CTN artists that have come to us. Um, so it's just been the start of something. Uh, they've visited, they've workshopped with us, they've met the community, we've had an amazing time. And then we've carried on working with them outside of the CTN touring. So it really is, a, is about extending that, that relationship and that contact that we have with artists. Amazing. Um, cool. Is everyone all right? Nodding? Yeah. I'm going to go into, oh, Jade's got a finger. Yeah. One more thing to say is that we, we're children and young people focused in Torbay, but actually a lot of the other regions aren't. And that's interesting. That's, that's an interesting dynamic to this. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. There's, I've spoken a little bit about what we've shared, but also all the organisations are really different with really different focuses which makes for very entertaining meetings and uh, hopefully a really good experience for artists because um, there's a huge variety in terms of, yeah, what everyone's trying to do, but a real sense of shared values, I guess is how I would put it. Um, cool. I'm now gonna try and talk as sort of clearly and concisely as I can about the sort of nuts and bolts of this opportunity, a sort of, advanced warning that I'm trying to be thorough. So like there's quite a lot of words that I'm gonna say now. <laughs> uh, I'm hopefully gonna do it in about 15 minutes. If at any point when I'm speaking, you're like, this does not make any sense or you've said something that I do not understand and I'm not gonna to remember to ask about that in a, in a bit. Please, please, please just raise your hand during this or type in the chat and we'll stop and talk about something that I've said. I'd much rather we do it in that slightly stoppy starty way then we get to the question and answer bit and everyone's like, ah. Um, so I'm gonna start talking, but Christy will, yeah, keep her eyes on the room. <laughs> and please do just raise your hand or type if you need something 
uh, clarified. Before I start that, does anyone have anything like that they want to ask or raise now? Cool. Okay, so yeah, as I said, this call out is designed to help us find an artist and company or company, sorry, who wants to work with us and who we want to work with really closely and in partnership for a year from September this year to September 2022. We have split the year into two kind of equal phases. We haven't given them very exciting names, but they're doing it what it says on the tin. Uh, we're calling it a development phase and a touring phase. So the development phase uh, will run, we think, from September this year to February 2022. And then the touring phase from March 22 to September 22. The idea is that you work with us as a national network across our locations to develop and then tour a live show. We really want the people of our places to be involved in both the development and the touring stage. We want this because we want the show that is developed to feel relevant to the people of our places. And we want to provide multiple moments of togetherness over the next year. I'm going to give a couple of examples as I go along about how that might work, but mainly the thing to say is you as artists will have ideas for how you would want to do that based on your practice and the idea that you have for the show. And it's just about us working with you to support to make that happen. So we're not going to tell you how to develop your work with our communities. The idea is that you have ideas for that and we help that to happen. Um, in terms of form, we want to work with an artist or company working in contemporary live performance. So that could be theatre, dance, circus, live art, cabaret, or probably a number of these forms combined. Uh, we would want to make a live show, basically. We're not seeking to make work on a particular theme or subject matter, but as I say, the crucial thing for us is we're interested in, in ways of working and ways of working that include our community and that feel collaborative in their nature. Um, again, yeah, these ideas will come from you, but for example, it might be that in the development stage, you want to work with local people in our places to gather specific stories that end up being integrated into the show that you're making. Uh, you might want to work with a group to create their own separate curtain raiser performance, which sits alongside the show. You might want people from our places to be in your performing company. We're up for all of these things, um, but these are ideas that we're excited about. Um, scale wise, obviously we're not programming into set spaces, but we would hope that in the touring phase, audience numbers in the hundreds would be able to experience the show in each place. Um, I'll talk a little bit about, more about the structure of that in a minute, but essentially the touring phase will involve, we expect around five days on location in each of the eight places. So we would probably expect, you know, two or three performances in each place. And we would be finding locations that meant maybe a hundred to 200 people could be at each of those shows to give you a sense of, the scale that we're working with. Um, it's harder to say in a development stage because obviously that will really depend on your idea and way of working, but perhaps tens of people in each place are able to engage during the development stage, maybe loads more or maybe a bit less, but hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of what we're imagining. Um, we want to work with people who are experienced and skilled at connecting with communities. This is a large, national network it's a project with a lot of partners and really big ambitions and we want to work with people who are up for that challenge and have ideas for how they want to work with our communities and play to the strengths of our places in terms of the show that you're developing it might be a new idea for a show um, you might have a show that you've already developed a bit or a lot that you want to reimagine uh, we're up for all of these options, really. Um, the main thing that we ask is that we want you to be ready to get developing from September this year. Um, so I guess we would expect that means you have a creative team in mind or in place if it's, if it's larger than you. Um, and we also ask that you would be ready to tour the work 
from March 2022. So after that six month period of support, supported development, there's a show that's ready to tour. Um, I've mentioned this before, but yeah, most of our venue um, partners are not venue based um, and they work across loads of sites across our community. We do sometimes partner with or use our own professional performance spaces. So the old courts in Wigan have, have their own venue and as does Battersea Art Centre in Wandsworth. Um, but most of the time we're presenting work in more unusual spaces that we equip as a project to a standard that you could sort of compare, compare to the studio theatre. So this has included parks, rooftops, car parks, community centres, galleries, warehouses. It's a very long list. Um, those are the sorts of spaces we anticipate this work will happen in. When we decide what space the work will be presented in, this will be led obviously by the company and the artist's idea first, and also the expertise of, of the network. And we also have a dedicated CTN production manager who will be supporting that process. Um, we will really try and aim to get prioritise accessibility in all of these decisions, both in terms of physical access um, in line with the social model of disability and also social access. How will our communities feel about coming to these places? How can we support them to feel comfortable in them? Another aspect of the project to mention is that um, the lead artist will be connected to and working with an associate artist based in each of the CTN locations. Um, these artists won't be recruited until the lead artist is in place and it will be done with your input. Um, the intention here really is that we're providing paid opportunities for developing and practicing artists in our town, towns and cities, and that we're creating the conditions for arts and culture to thrive in our places in the long term. So these local artists might be commissioned by us to make their own work, perhaps on the same theme as the lead artist's work, or they might end up forming part of your extended creative team nationally and work alongside you directly to develop, develop a show in our communities. We're up for devising this part of the project with you, basically. Um, we're also obviously up for devising the exact working schedule uh, for this year long project with you. We don't have predetermined tour dates. We just have the, that sort of vague breakdown of development period for six months, touring period for six months. But all of that is up for discussion, basically, and for us to work together with the eight partners to make the best schedule for artists and the work and for the partners together. We have also designed an application process that we think hopefully to support the development of this rough, rough structure as we go. Um, so a process that helps us to sort of start from this EOI, which is quite broad through to like the honing of an idea and a plan. But then also the lead artist or company would have play, paid, sorry, planning time with the project director, me and the network from September to do that scheduling work. Um, we have obviously created a structure that's flexible and to be devised together, but we have also set up a rough idea of how much work we expect this project to include and that was for the purposes of creating the budget and assigning creative fees so I'm going to talk through this on the caveat that ultimately the budget could be spent in whatever way the idea needed but this is how we've come to the numbers that you see um, so we're viewing the development and the touring phase as each consisting of eight weeks of activity spread across six months each as I said, development phase running September this year to February next year and touring phase March next year to September next year. Um, in addition to the eight weeks of activity associated with each phase, there are two paid periods of planning, preparation, evaluation work. Each week of activity, so that's 16 weeks in total across development and touring, and each period of planning or evaluation, there's two of these periods, each of those weeks has a creative fees budget of £4,000. So you could view the £72,000 creative fees budget as 18 weeks of activity at £4,000 a week. You could also view it in loads of other ways, <laughs> but that's how we've got to that number. I guess the important, or well, the probably more fixed half of it is that we want to show that tours to eight places. So there is eight weeks of work. 
Um, additionally to that create a fees budget is resource in the project to cover transport, accommodation, per diems, uh, access support, production and technical costs. There's a 20 grand ring, fe ring fenced, sorry, production budget. Uh, we anticipate that would be used for things like uh, set creation or show specific hires, perhaps equipping non-performance spaces with technical equipment during rehearsal time or development time. Um, yeah. When it comes to the touring phase, a CTM production manager will be working with you and all the partners to equip non-typical performance spaces with a technical, technical infrastructure, sorry, comparable to a studio theatre setup. And there will be local technical support in each location. And in terms of sort of more general staffing support, the lead artist would be contracted by the old courts as the lead partner of the project. They'd be working very closely with me as the project director and with the eight local partners. Um, and yeah, the production manager, CTM production manager would oversee tech and production in all places. So you'd have one key technical contact working across all eight locations. Cool. More breath, because that was a lot of information. I'm hoping that everyone's following. <laughs> Uh, it's just like absolutely chucking it down the rain where I am. I don't know if anyone else. So much rain currently. Okay. Um, great. So I'm just going to give you a quick snapshot of the application process and then we'll go on to the questions. Part. So, yeah, at this stage, stage one, we're asking for artists to submit an expression of interest. Uh, it's a process that we've done, designed to hopefully be straightforward uh, to help us to get to know you a bit and your work and your values and also vice versa for you to understand a bit more about us and just make sure that we're a good fit basically for a year-long partnership. Um, I'm just going to share my screen again just in case it's useful for me to show you um, our application page. So hopefully you would have seen our website a lot of what I've been talking about today, if you click on the artist's call out, uh, you'll be able to read a lot of the information here. There's also lots of other resource on the page, um, how we work. These are sort of like nine principles of working together. There's more detailed information, which sort of reiterates what I've been talking about in terms of fees. Uh, there's some accessible formats here. Uh, and there's also this FAQs page, which, Again, it's sort of covering some of what I've been talking about and hopefully useful. But when you're ready to make an application, you click on that apply button, it takes you to this expression of interest form. What we're asking for is, yes, yeah, some name and monitoring information to make sure we're tracking who we're reaching with this uh, call out. We ask people if they want, it's not compulsory, but I'd really advise you to, uh, is to see examples of, of your work. Uh, you can upload this as a file or as a URL, you just choose which one you want to do and then the form changes to allow you to do that. And then there's the EOI expression. So uh, we've asked you to tell us in that what's your preferred art form and your way of working, what interests you about our way of working, and really broadly what you can imagine creating with us over the next year. We've asked you to refer back to our way of working to help you with that. And you can submit that in three ways. You can submit it as a text file. If you see when you click text, a word box appears, 300 words. Just to say, because this is a form that doesn't have a save button, I would always recommend if you are doing text, just to draft it in Word or another savable format and then copy it in just so you don't lose anything. Uh, you could also share a video file with us, either as a link or a file up to two minutes in length or you can record yourself uh, you know, after. Cool. Um, fab, so then the EOI, the date, closing date for that is Monday the 5th of July. Um, all the EOIs will be reviewed and shortlisted by members of the network. Um, so there's sort of 17 of us as a reading group, so that's two representatives from each of the eight partners, plus me, and we'll be doing this reading and reviewing in the weeks of the 5th and the 12th of July. 
with the intention of notifying everyone by Monday the 19th of July if they've reached the next round or not. We do anticipate a really high number of EOIs for this so that we may incur some delays to our timeline depending on that but we will keep everyone up to date and we're going to try our very best. Um, depending on numbers we, we then are looking at sort of two potentially two further stages of, of the application. What we're imagining at the moment is that after the EOI stage we would invite artists to an online workshop style session with a small group of artists and the CTM partners. And the intention there would really be about helping artists to understand more about our specific locations. So the differences and similarities we've spoken a little bit about already, but giving people more information basically about what it's like in Torbay and Gloucester and Thanet and who's here and you know how we could imagine this working just to help you develop your ideas in a bit more detail. Um, and then after that sort of workshop session, we would ask for a bit more of a detailed proposal basically on how you would want to work with us over the next year. Um, we then imagine a bit more shortlisting after that. And then, uh, yeah, potentially a third stage where it's just a one on one conversation. Um, depending on applications and how we go with the shortlisting, it might be that those two stages I just described are effectively one stage. We, we need to work that out. Um, but our plan is for this sort of process to be complete and an artist to be in place by September. Um, feedback wise for the first stages of EOI, we're gonna just provide some general feedback, which will be our response to potentially many, many applications, um, which we'll share with everyone in email, but then any subsequent stage will be able to give individual feedback wherever that's requested from our. Cool. I think that is the end of my very long speech. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with me. Um, I would obviously love to hear someone else's voice, as I'm sure you all would. Uh, so I'm just going to open up yeah, the floor to you guys. If you have any questions you want to put to me, and obviously Jade and others can chip in as well, love to hear them. As I said, there is no question too small or large. We will do our best, but no one's making a note of this ask whatever you feel like you need to ask in order to make an application or work out if you even want to make an application. Um, yeah, please, if there's something on your mind, please ask it. That doesn't matter. Uh, obviously people based in CTN locations are absolutely welcome to apply, as is anyone living in England. Uh, yeah, for us, obviously no one's, well, I don't think anyone is probably likely to be from all eight places unless they've moved around a lot. Um, but yeah, for us, bringing in attitudes and experience and whatever from outside of a place is super exciting and important to us. So yeah, we're not looking for an applicant who has grown up or lives in any of these places that isn't part of our um, criteria or decision making. Lucy was just saying in the chat that um, that they have no questions because that was very comprehensive. Oh so, God. Well done, Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a question in the chat from Caitlin. Thank you. Are you expecting a particular level of experience for the artist or company to have? And if so, how are you measuring that? Yeah, really good question. Um, we purposefully didn't in the call out say, uh, include a minimum number of years experience, for example. Um, part of the thinking behind that is I guess our previous experience on CTN where we've worked with artists who might be really, really experienced in um, part of their practice. So uh, whether that's working really intensely with communities, but maybe haven't toured that much. And I think we would always be interested in, in that waiting. Uh, so we've asked people, we've said we're looking for people who have experience and skill in working with communities, mainly because we don't really have, I guess, the capacity to help someone through learning that process. Like we want artists to be bringing that skill to the project. We do have the structure and capacity to help people tour. We are a touring network and that's what we do. And you know, from a producing point of view, 
you know, we can do quite a lot of the heavy lifting for companies in terms of booking travel and accommodation, for example, or um, well, that's the main thing I can think of, but that's a big one. <laughs> Scheduling and budgeting and stuff like that. So um, I guess for us, what we really want to see demonstrated in the EOI is your practice and your way of working and for that to feel like it would be a really good fit for our communities and it feels like you would know how to come into eight different places and work with people outside of a closed rehearsal room environment. That's the sort of experience and skill we need to see demonstrated. If you haven't toured loads nationally, that's okay. Um, but obviously this is a big project. The budget is large and we would want to be working with artists that feel like they can manage that. Um, so whilst there is a lot of support, you know, ultimately there will be a payment of a large amount of money <laughs> and there'll be an expectation of managing that and uh, making the project, you know, run yourselves in lots of ways. So it's a really hard thing to answer. I don't know if I've done a good job of that, but um, yeah, we're not looking for a demonstration of a certain number of years, but we are looking for experience and skill, particularly in the way of working. Um, yeah. Do tell us if you've toured lots, you know, great to know, but I guess from a CTM perspective, yeah, we tour in a way that's probably quite different to other touring. So yeah, for us, it's all about that experience and practice working with communities and people. That's a great question. I'll start, but Jade, you might want to chip in on this. Yeah. Um, so just, I guess, just to sort of state what the infrastructure of the project is, I work four days a week and my main job is CTN. So there's quite a lot of capacity there around communication, I guess, making sure that any questions you have are put to the network in an efficient way and that you're not having to replicate eight times over. I guess my job is to try and do a lot of that kind of backroom work so that like conversations between licenses are direct but uh yeah th there's no escaping the fact that any project is going to have eight aspects to it and that's quite a lot <laughs> um the ctm partners are have less paid time directly through this uh project it works out to around two days a month like direct funding um but there is a huge amount of I guess, yeah, commitment, expertise, and as you say, that local knowledge. And I guess us thinking about this associate artist role in each place, there is some scope for, yeah, we want that to be a creative position, so that isn't about adding producing capacity, but there is a sort of, I don't know, bit of a linchpin role <laughs> there. But we have done projects like this before where, yeah, recruitment of whole sort of local cast has happened. Um, Jade, I don't know if you can speak to that or have anything to add. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it's safe to, I can only talk from Dorstedt's perspective, but I guess there's, you know, there is, we are deeply embedded in our community. Yeah. And um, we did, as Rosie was just saying, we, we did have a project, um, Dad Dancing, uh, with that was led by Rosie Heaford, Alexandrina Hemsley and Helena Webb. And that was just, it was incredible because we, because we're so linked in with our community, with families, children, it has a ripple effect. So we're completely, we're just, we're part of the community. We're not separate from, we have kids in the schools. We, you know, we, we're there. So, um, and because we're an MPO, we, we can, yes, we do only probably have about two days a month, but we are completely committed to the project and supporting it and making things happen and we make, incredible th things happen all the time so yeah that's that that will be covered completely in terms of our connections to the communities because we are a trusted organization within the community and people know who we are and trust us with their children um i can see susie's got a hand up i think she wants to say something you're on mute yeah yeah i just thought it might be useful to say the other side for one of the partners who isn't an npo because one of the big things in this project is the huge variety of situations and resources and things you're going to find in all of the places that you work with. 
basically. Um, from our point of view, Loop in the Loop was um, is a very small organisation that relies entirely on project funding. Um, it was actually set up to become part of CTN. It was I set it up through the arts organisation I'd already got here as a consortia. Um, we now become a CIC. We're going up the ranks, hey. <laughs> um, and we have the this this project will actually follow on to a, a, a six month project that we're just beginning now funded by the arts council um uh with a, a an outreach officer for the first time as a part-time post working with an artist in residence we'd already decided to do this so it's it's ended up serendipity and we're working with an artist in residence in one of the um the poorest wards in our um, area, Thanet, which is in the top 5%, this ward, well, seven of our wards are for deprivation. Uh, and um, it just means that we, we have lots of lot we have we have a huge support network with other organizations some of whom are which a lot more resource than us and like 1927 are an mpo that have got a base here in well in margate they're very supportive of us um and we will draw on all of those resources and we're just doing a project with sortition to um uh uh, develop an advisory board, a community and arts advisory board, which will be in place by the time this project begins. Um, but we will have to work extremely hard. We still have to raise the money um, for us to run this project. Uh, so we we don't just, I know Jade, you have an amazing sort of thing uh, that, that you do with your community in Dorset Arts. Um, we, we do, but it's not as continuous and formed as you would find with Doorstep or Strike a Light or Wigan as the three MPOs of the eight towns. I just thought that was useful. Totally. And I guess if, if your idea as an artist was, um, yeah, did involve a recruitment of yeah they were talking about a, a cast of local performers for example I guess that's where that sort of development phase paid development phase of equal time and weight to the touring phase comes in in terms of we don't necessarily expect people to spend an equal amount of time during the development phase in each location that would depend on the project but there is resource to do that if that's the plan <laughs> uh, so yeah, if your project was a, or did involve recruiting local performers, say there is money for you to spend time in each of those eight places doing that um, work directly. And obviously we'd massively encourage artists to be spending time in all of the places or as many of the places as possible before the show arrives in town. Um, because yeah, that's the, end of the project really is so that when the show arrives, people know about it have been involved in it, have, you know, know their mate who's in it or have been asked to build the set. <laughs> you know, there's a there's a there's a connection to the work um, that happens in advance. Yeah, I mean there is no getting away that there's eight partners and that's a lot, um, especially for the development of, yeah, in your case, you know, almost a show from scratch in each location. Um, yeah, I think that that does feel like a lot of work. <laughs> uh, and I that's you know not me making any critique of your practice at all, but ju just thinking about the resource and time. If we're talking about, you know, if we condense it and use the budget in the way that I've described, potentially eight weeks of development in order to then do an eight week tour, that's very tight. If uh, if there is a, a whole change each time but I guess it's also for you to say to you know that's that's me budgeting based on like assuming there would be about six people to pay in each company and thinking about the cost of moving those people around or whatever if you feel like you know your practice and approach with the resources that we've laid out and the time that it is feasible then we're all is <laughs> like we would you know, listen to that and, uh, you know, think, be keen to hear from you on that. 
Um, but at the same time, I guess what, what we've laid out in terms of the fees and resources available, that, that's the whole budget. We're not hiding anything like it. That's it. So it's for us to use, it's, you know, however you guys would need to, to make your idea possible, but that, that is the resource. Um, and we do want to do this project within a year because we want to do it again the next year and again the year after that. Um, so I guess the timeline of us working over that year, there isn't a huge amount of scope for that to take two years. You know, we, we want to develop in six months and tour for the next six months like that. That's the time that we're working to. And obviously, yeah, we live in a world now where we know that the best laid plans can change on a dime. And that isn't I'm not being naive around that, but the project also wants to run again with another artist next year and again with another artist after that. So I guess working to those timelines, that resource that we've laid out is really important. And we would totally just urge you to be, um, yeah, honest and you know practical about that in the same way that we would be. So I guess the, the opportunity that we've offered in terms of how you can, what, what information you can provide in that AOI, there's an opportunity to share three files or links that tell us a bit more about your practice or previous examples of your practice. We've also asked for in that 300 words or audio moment that you tell us about your way of working. And I think that's what I was talking about earlier, which is the emphasis of, on experience in this role is around your experience working in a way which we can see working well in our communities. So connecting with people outside of the closed rehearsal room, you know, your experience in, in that world feels important for us to hear. And we want to hear enough about the idea, you know, the theme or the idea or the something that is unique about the show that you want to develop or tour that gets us excited. So we don't need to know super practically at the EOI stage and there won't be enough space for you to say, and this would be broken down into X number of workshops and da, 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 da. That's, we're gonna go through that process over the stage two and three. So actually drill into like exactly how it would work. What we're asking you to express is, yeah, who you are as an artist, why you think that sits well with us in terms of what our values are and what we've explained today. And what's the idea? What, what are you thinking of when we're talking about this? which is like, this is the idea that I want to make and then tour into these places. Those are, that's the sense that we want to get. We've got a couple of questions in the chat. Um, one around if we expect a brief budget in the expression of interest and sort of connected to that. Um, if it's the artist or us that thinks about ticketing, if it's free or if they have to build that into the budget. Great. Uh, no, you don't need to do a budget in the OI. That will come... Uh, later as we work through the process. Um, obviously, one of our, well, not necessarily, obviously one of our criteria at assessing the EOI is whether we feel the project is realistic. So I guess it would have been helpful for you to think about the budget and resource that we have and the time that we have in expressing your idea, but I don't need to see the workings out <laughs> of that at this stage. Um, and then the second was around, oh, ticketing. Uh, yeah, so we do have a small amount of box office expectation, which the partners each hold the responsibility for that in the budget. Uh, each of the partners decide their own ticketing uh, processes, ticket prices. That is not decided centrally by the network. That's for each of the partners to decide. Um, there's no, the artists do not need to factor ticket sales into their thinking other than what I've said already, which is we want to reach quite a few people with this work. So if you have an idea that for whatever reason can only see, be seen by one audience member at a time and it's only ever performed once, that's not the project for us because we want to be reaching, you know, a few hundred people in each place. But other than that, um, yeah, artists don't need to worry too much about uh, box office income. That's something that we will, yeah, take responsibility for and work from. Obviously, if you have ideas around that in terms of, you know, for whatever reason, you, you really feel like your show needs to be priced in this way or tickets need to be sold in this way, 
they're like always up for those conversations. It's not a closed done deal, but um, yeah, the way that the budget works, it's about us giving you this resource and you working out how it's spent creatively and then us working together on the sort of broader budget. There was a similar, do we have time for a couple more questions? Yeah, yeah. Um, there was a similar question in the chat about um, if people need to write up a, a, any, a, a timeline in the expression of interest. No. Great. And then another question about um, if you're, if people are applying as a company, is it okay to explain um, relevant experience that individuals within that company have gathered outside of the company? Yeah, sure. So if you're applying as a sort of collective of individual artists that are coming together for a project, for example, um, perhaps you might want to use those three opportunities to share work, to show the work of different uh, uh, experience or expertise within that group of coming together and maybe give us a sense of what that working group is. Um, but yeah, it doesn't, it's, it's okay if you're working together as a group of artists and an idea as opposed to a a company that always works together like I think we're yeah open to that um can I just add to that please Jade yeah I'm just thinking also if it's a a company um and some of the artists within that company also do other freelance work that's really got relevant experience I think it'd be worth mentioning that rather than whether it's a collective or a a company of freelance artists that also do that company I think all of that experience really matters actually it's it'd be good for us to hear about that yeah yeah um I've answered the question about ticketing haven't I yeah yeah cool great Yeah, that's a really good question. Thank you. I think I've uh, maybe skimmed it, but I definitely haven't gone into detail. So um, the development period for the work, for the project, as I've said, is, yeah, there's sort of six months of time for that. And at the moment, we're assuming that perhaps the entire budget would be split in half. And so half of the resource would be spent in that time as well. So eight, eight weeks of working at four grand a week, you know, there's potentially sort of 30 odd grand of money there we have additionally in the budget got resource for people to spend physical time on location with the CTM partners as part of the development of the project so it could be that you really need two weeks in a rehearsal room and that we would the project would pay for your time but also for your accommodation and travel to do that rehearsal in uh, Hull for example you could also say, you know, it's really important for me to be rehearsing in Bristol because I have great resource there and that's where people are based. So you could spend some of your development time in Bristol and then maybe a few days on location with the CTM partners. It doesn't have to be the development stage is split equally across every place on tour. But we are wanting to see some sort of engagement interaction with the place before then that show goes on tour. So. I guess the short answer is it's really up to you and we want to support the development of the best bit of work but we also want that work and for us the best bit of work is the work that feels really relevant to and inclusive of our community so we feel like it's very likely that some of that development work will happen on location with the CTM partners and there is budget around fees so the 72 grand of fees covers the whole year but around that and not taking from that is budget to support you to be on location. So travel accommodation per diem. That's separately out of that, not part of that 72 grand, it's a separate budget that we run to support you to be working away from home as needed. Um, yeah, separately to that, the sort of 72,000 aid period, um, there is, we've got a separate, what we're calling a production budget. And so in theory, what I'm expecting that production budget to, to pay for are things like 
I guess the equivalent of like a production week in between the development stage with communities and taking the show on tour that that middle bit <laughs> as you're describing where you've perhaps been doing some work uh, on location as CTM partners and you need to get ready creatively as a team set the show up whatever needs to happen before you then go on tour there is separate resource for that mm -hmm. and that could absolutely happen in your place and if you would need to dig into that budget in order to pay for rehearsal space or um, tech or a hiring of you know support again that budget is there to be flexibly supporting that time and work we would not want that to be unpaid basically as mm -hmm. and there's obviously that sort of middle bit that needs to happen um, mm -hmm. but it might be that that middle bit happens in one of the CTM partner locations you know it might be that you want to use a space I don't know, at Battersea the Art Centre or at, mm. at the old courts in Wigan or a, a rehearsal space that we find and work in in Gloucester or Torbay or Thanet. There's a huge amount of resource and potential across the network um, and we would be supporting the artist to use the resource that we have most effectively to make the idea the best it can be. We're open to ideas. I mean, previously we have programmed work that is specifically for young people, say. Um, I think probably our preference at this moment, because there has been such a lack of work being programmed, is we would really be interested in an idea that could be experienced by a broad range of ages. Um, just because there's been so little opportunity for our communities to come together all together, I think we, we are really excited by, by that idea. But in the past, we have absolutely programmed shows that is a bit more specific for an age group. And we haven't said in the call out, you know, that we're not interested in shows for early years, for example. And I think if the, if the proposal was really strong and we felt really excited about it, we would absolutely take that forward. But I do think in the background of this year and what everyone's experienced, an opportunity for a performance that does bring a broad cross section of our community together does feel like something we'd be particularly in making. Have I missed anything in the chat, Christine? No, people are having to. No, just people um, saying thank you and having to leave. Okay. No other questions. Does anyone else have anything? Oh, EJ's got a hand up. Hi, sorry if I missed stuff. I uh, just changed to my outdoor office. Um, <laughs> Uh, when when we get the expressions of interest, um, help us as readers um, really be specific about what you want us to look at. So if you're sending us examples of your work, be really specific about which bit you want us to look at. So if you send us a film, tell us to look at 10 minute 30 seconds in um, because we won't have time to watch an hour long show. So be really specific about what you want us to see and be really specific about what your role in each of those projects were. Um, so we, we just want to use time really efficiently and make sure we're not wasting yours as well as all the people that are going to read it. So really guide us through your expression of interest. You know, tell us a story that we can understand um, and that will massively help us make decisions. Uh, we haven't even discussed that, which probably means that we're open to anything. Uh, I guess we, because of the way that we have structured tours in the past, which is um, companies are in town with us for about five days, that we, I guess, usually have the experience where the show can run multiple times over a week, maybe on two or three different days. Um, but yeah, we're not looking for a specific Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, running time or yeah, we don't have a criteria. Go on then. So from, I think I, I'm speaking for most of us in the network, but definitely from a strike a light perspective, we want to change the face of touring. I'm not quite sure that before the pandemic, it worked brilliantly well for everyone. 
um, you know, for artists and for audiences, the fly in, fly out, the, you know, 16 dates on a tour, you know, how enriching was that for everyone? So I think we're really trying to think about how we, we, we take a stand and challenge the old norms. You know, how do we do things differently? How do we care for artists? And how do we think about audiences in, in a much more considered way? Um, that for me feels like what we're, we're thinking about and what we're talking about at CTN. Um, let's be different. Let's let's be a bit radical if we can, and let's not go back back to what we had before. How do we move forward and make things better? Uh, yeah, definitely that. Um, we are definitely thinking. I mean, we've worked together for a long time, okay? and this began as like a three-year project back in 2013 and eight years later we're still working together so you know one of our key working principles is we're in this for the long run and that's definitely true we're not interested really in you know projects that end <laughs> if that sounds a bit weird but uh you know we all choose to work together on this this project it's, it's additional to the work that everyone does in their place and we choose to come together in this way, as EJ says, because we feel like it could just be done better. Uh, and that our sort of collaboration hopefully means that it's an easier and better experience for artists to get their work out really widely nationally, but not having to, yeah, deal with, you know, the challenge of dealing with venues one after the other and all of the work, the huge amount of workload that goes into that about us collaborating well and then us as a network collaborating with an artist. And we do feel like there's loads of, yeah, there's loads of good in that. Um, in, in the sort of short term, I guess short-ish term over the next three years of working together, um, our plan is to do this model three times. So uh, at, the, at the moment, um, the, yeah, as I said, we'll do September to September, but the idea is that in the middle of next year, we will, whilst this show is touring, we will begin the development phase with another show. So that six months after that, there's another show on tour and another show on tour. So we want to pack quite a lot into this period of, of funding. And uh, thanks Arts Council, you're great. Um, the Arts Council are funding us for, yeah, the next three years. And we have, you know, broader fundraising relationships beyond that as well, but I guess, Short term and long term, we want to do this model and get it right and learn from it as we go. And in the long term, yeah, keep working together forever. <laughs> I think I missed a question in the chat, which was, I'm wondering if you're interested in programming adult shows, i.e. not suitable for children. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, again, I think we haven't been specific on, the, on that audience. I think tell us what you really want to make and what we really want to do and what you're really excited by and I'm sure we'll be excited by it too. Um, we don't have really, really focused um, idea of exactly who we want to come to the shows, but um, yeah, I, I do think we want lots of people to be able to come, <laughs> mainly because, yeah, that hasn't been possible. Um, it just needs to be shit hot. There we go. You heard it here first. <laughs> And, and we're really, really good, aren't we, all of us, at making a whole bigger thing around the actual show that CTN brings in or creates or anything else. And that's the bit that we've been doing for seven years together, isn't it? Making that one thing into something far beyond that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. It's not the feeling of just one touring show being part of a programme. It's about really, yeah, making it a moment for the artists and for the audiences and creating as much space as possible for those people to come together and like genuinely connect for artists to know where they are and who they're performing to and working with as opposed to it feeling like you could be anywhere in the country in any kind of space it um yeah hopefully doesn't feel like that great I'm aware we've got about 10 minutes left. So yeah, if anyone does have any other, any other questions, do, do use this time. Can I just quickly say that um, we are really trying hard to make sure this call out reaches the broadest possible um, audience that we, poss that we can. Um, we've got some great networks, but you are the best network. Um, 
Uh, if you decide maybe this isn't for you, please, please pass this opportunity on to someone else. Um, and if you are feeling super generous and it is for you, please, could you still pass it on to someone else? And um, we're really interested in, in reaching parts that other networks can't reach. Um, and uh, we really want to make sure that the un unrepresented voices are around this table. Um, so, so, yeah, please be advocates if you can. It would massively help us. Yeah, thanks, EJ. Massively second that. Um, that would be amazing. We're running another one of these sessions next Wednesday in the morning, 11 till 12.30. Uh, if you can't get enough, you could come again, but you will have to listen to me <laughs> do that whole thing. Uh, but yeah, there's going to be another opportunity for people to uh, come and experience this delightful chat. So do let people know if you think people like, I don't know, perhaps wouldn't want to read all the information, but might come to this and get excited. Um, yeah, massively benefit. Uh, it'd be a massive benefit to us, sorry, if you could, if you could spread the word. Great. Well, I think I... I don't, if you have another question while I'm doing this wrapping up bit, interrupt me. Um, but thank you so much for coming today. It's really exciting for us to see loads of faces and to actually be talking about this project in real terms. It feels really exciting. Um, we're so happy that it's out in the world and we're super excited about the applications that we're going to get to read um, from July. If you do have any other questions that that come to you uh, or you get stuck at, in as when you're doing the process or whatever my email address is all over the website so you can contact me directly or you can get in touch with us uh, social media um, whatever's the best way for you please don't hesitate to ask questions we'd much rather people feel really supported to put in this EOI um, than just struggle and, and don't we'd much rather help you to do it um, and yeah, other than that, I just say thank you to uh, Jade and Christy and EJ and Susie, uh, to James who's been doing captioning, thank you so much. And to all of you for coming along. It's been, uh, yeah, really great to meet you all and best of luck with the application if you're putting it in. And yeah, that's it, I think. Thanks everyone. I'll hang around here for like 10 minutes until the end, for eight minutes, if you wanna sing me a song. <laughs> But yeah, other than that, please leave at your leisure. Thank you. Okay.